it's here, but should this have been the film that we got in 2016? My name's Al, this is the Geek In Review, and this is my full Suicide Squad review. So if you haven't seen the film, please don't look at this video. I do have a spoiler free video that I posted a few days ago. There'll be a link in the description, so go ahead and watch that before you check this out. Now, Suicide Squad, which at the time I made this video was on track to make about 30 million in its opening weekend, has now landed and is generally getting pretty positive reviews. Whichever way you look at it, DC films have always been a fun, unpredictable ride compared to their Marvel counterparts and yet DC haven't always got it right, they've certainly had their hits and their misses. But with the Snyder Cut's Let's Try Again spirit, the Suicide Squad is here. Now as I mentioned in my spoiler free video, this isn't really a sequel to the first film, you don't have to have seen it to understand it, there's a pretty basic setup. But the sequel starts from Savant or Michael Rooker's point of view and I wasn't really surprised by this as he is a regular James Gunn actor. He showed up in a bunch of his films, Guardians of the Galaxy, Super, The Belko Experiment, you name it, Michael Rooker's been in, James in a James Gunn film. And it introduces a new squad pretty much the same way as the first film did. They're recruited, some are willing, some pretty much aren't. Now let's start with the new characters because the trailer did show us all the new characters and as I said this is going to contain spoilers so this is your final warning. And as much as I like the introduction to these new characters such as Javelin, Blackguard, Mongal, TDK, all the rest of them and he, it was good seeing Captain Boomerang back as well, they all get killed in the opening battle. The trailer did kind of indicate this if you watch it back because if you notice all the guys that get killed are only shown at night, they're not shown in any of the day shots with Rick Flag or Harley in South America because they'd already died at that point. So they are pretty much entertaining and it would have been nice to see a few of them stay around longer but I get what the message was trying to get sent here with the start of this film. And James Gunn pulls it off. It is a little gory, but it's comic book gore, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Also, it's great watching these actors that are playing these characters try and talk about being in the film and not give away the fact that they get killed in the first 10 minutes. It has been kept pretty well hidden off the internet, so well done all you geeks out there. I'm proud of you. I didn't discuss it myself with anyone who hadn't seen the film. But what did you guys think? Was the opening 5 or 10 minutes live up to the hype? Did you enjoy it? Who did you want to see more of? Let me know in the comments below. But as for the rest of the new characters, they're all pretty much decent. Polka Dot Man and Ratcatcher 2 and Killer Shark are the absolute standouts. Idris Elba, as always, is reliable as Bloodsport, but he just feels like he's filling in for Will Smith. He's got the backstory of having the daughter and things like that as well. And yeah, it did feel a little bit similar for the first five minutes, but after that, I managed to switch it off. There aren't too many real comparisons, and Idris Elba's character is a lot more fleshed out in this film than Will Smith ever was in the first one, even in the extended cut, if you've seen that, which I wouldn't recommend. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Pretty self-aware in the opening scenes, with the fact that Peacemaker and Bloodsport have similar backstories and they make a joke about it and it is a sort of running joke throughout the film. I do wish that they had actually spent a little bit more time on this but it was quite a little good sort of easter egg or very self-aware, very meta but then again these guys are supposed to be meta humans even when most of them aren't. But I do wish James Gunn does more of this stuff. James Gunn does a lot of humour, but he's a director that can do smart humour. We've seen it in pretty much all of his films, but that's not the tone that he goes for. I would say that the lower humour doesn't lower the tone of the film, it just makes the tone more of James Gunn's tone. But for the surviving members of the squad that make it past the initial battle, the banter is pretty good. It's a mixed bag, there's good back and forth between all the characters, Idris Elba and John Cena, are absolutely fantastic. Joel Kinnaman is always reliable as well, but really the stars here are Ratcatcher and Polka Dot Man. 
I so much want to see more of these characters, especially Polka Dot Man, but spoiler alert, he does get squashed by Starro at the end of the films. So if the Peacemaker show is a prequel, which I don't think it is, it probably is a sequel, there's a chance that Polka Dot Man could show up, but I highly doubt it. But as for Ratcatcher 2, I definitely think, given the reception that she's getting online, is going to be absolutely fantastic. And James Gunn taking two of these pretty much joke, lesser known, no one cares about gutter characters, and bringing them into this film with such heart is absolutely brilliant. It adds so much to the film. And both their powers look fantastic on screen, especially Polka Dots Man. I said this in my last video, but I'd love to see Polka Dot Man go up against Superman or like a super powered hero because the guy could just do absolute carnage. But while the Suicide Squad themselves are pretty good, not everyone else is really that great. Peter Capaldi, I felt so let down by this performance. I was expecting so much more. I wanted it to be over the top and it just wasn't. I said that in my last video as well that this film suffers from a real lack of a credible or interesting villain and they could have just done it so easily with Peter Capaldi's The Thinker and when you think about this, if you look at all the press for the Suicide Squad in the last week or so, I've not seen Peter Capaldi get interviewed in any of these group chat videos or even individual ones. I mean, what the fuck is going on with that? Why is no one talking about that? That's crazy. It should be getting picked up on. But anyway, also Taika Waititi. I remember when the original sort of teaser for this dropped and his name popped up there and I was like, well, who's he going to play? And everyone assumed for a while that he was going to be Killer Shark. But yeah, he's just Ratcatcher's dad and I don't see the point of making his name so big on the titles and the posters if he doesn't play that big a deal. But this was an absolute fun, enjoyable popcorn film. All the characters that you want to see are here. Harley Quinn does get quite a bit of screen time but it's not as much as the trailers would suggest that she would. It's good that the story isn't focusing too much on her either, although most of her scenes are separated from the squad. Because she's not involved with a big character like the Joker, and because we've had her solo film, it feels that there's less pressure to have her as the main focus on this. I mean, I imagine some executive probably did want to make Harley Quinn the focus on this, but James Gunn knows what he's doing. These characters are really well spaced out. They all get their time to breathe and their backstory. And John Cena's Peacemaker, I'll be very interested to see how that goes down. I'm looking forward to the television show a post credit scene where you see him survive so we assume that the TV show could be a sequel but you never know again it could be a prequel as well. One of the other things I thought that didn't really work for this was the sort of behind the scenes with the government IT guys and they're all taking bets on the Suicide Squad and that sort of office banter. That to me felt like that should have been in the first film. I don't really think it totally fit in with the humour in the rest of it. And there's a little bit too many scenes of those guys, especially the guy in the glasses and the blonde woman. Viola Davis is great again as Amanda Waller. I just wish she got a little bit more to do and a little bit more interactions with the main squad. Uh, I hope to see her again, but if we don't, that's fine because there is a sort of comic book story where she gets replaced by a Russian spy who takes over the organisation. There's been no announcements about Suicide Squad 3, I think the reason for that is James Gunn still has Guardians of the Galaxy to do next, so I don't think we're going to get anything really announced that soon on this, depending on obviously James Gunn's schedule with Marvel and the ongoing world situation as well. Things are good at the moment, cinemas are opening back up, people are going out, it's all good, but we have to be careful. But all in all, I really did enjoy this film. I really loved seeing characters like Rick Flagg and Harley back and getting a bit more on those. Also, as I mentioned, loved Polka Dot Man and Ratcatcher 2 and Killer Shark. The rest of the squad were pretty decent as well. There was no one that I had any issues with. I can see the online community maybe having a bit of a beef with Peacemaker, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see. But let me know what you think of this film. Did it live up to the trailer hype? Did it let you down? Was it better than the first one? Of course it was. Don't answer that question. But you can answer other questions and ask questions as well in the comments below. Or you can follow me on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews. My name's Al. Thanks for watching.